Hi, this is Matt from ESU, and today we're going to be talking about consisting with ESU locomotives and how easy it is to use the Loc Programmer to set that up. Now, there's different types of consisting. Uh, there's what we would call like a simple, or sometimes I've heard people call it like a hybrid consisting method. That you're depending on what your command station's using. Uh, today, we're just going to be simply talking about the NMRA Advanced Consisting, which typically uses CVs 19, 21, and 20. Now, ESU decoders also have the ability to use CVs 109 and 110, which actually gives you more availabilities to have functions uh, activated within a consist. So we have up to 30, actually uh, 32 if you want to consider the front and rear lights, uh, but 32 function buttons that can be on or activated while in consist. So we're going to set that up today. Um, so uh, simply just to start, we're going to go to the um, the loc programmer here as it's already open. Uh, we have a file open, but it really doesn't matter which file. Uh, the consisting features and, and uh, controls are going to be the same no matter which file that you're using. So we want to be in the decoder tab and then the address tab. And as you can see here, um, this is going to talk about DCC consist address, which is in CV19. So when you set this up, now, what, what a consist is, this is simply a group of locomotives. So now, instead of talking to each locomotive individually, we're going to be talking to that group as a whole. So we want to give that entire group an address of its own. This is separate from the locomotive address, which is set directly above this using CVs 29. Um, so um, what we're going to do is simply... Um, set an address. I'm going to keep it at one. It can be, um, you know, you can actually take this, I mean, you can run it all the way up if you want, and you'll see that it only stops at 127. So uh, this is 127 groups of locomotives that you can have on your layout. Um, so I usually just start at the bottom just to keep things clean. So we're going to start it at one. Now, once that's activated uh, using CV19, uh, once you've written this to the decoder, you need to remember that that decoder is only going to typically run under that consist address. You'll be able to control some of the, the lighting and the sound features, but it's probably not going to move until you set CV19 back to zero. And once CV19 is set to zero, or in, in the low programmer case, we just simply turn it off. Um, once it's back to zero or off, then it will reiterate or it will uh, reactivate the locomotive address depending on whatever you have it set for. So again, once we set it, it's going to go by the consist address that we assign to it. And each locomotive within the consist is going to use exactly the same consist address. That way they operate as a group. So we need to decide, is this going to be, the next step I should say, is that we need to decide, uh, is, is this going to be a lead locomotive or one of the intermediate locomotives or a trailing locomotive? So if it's, in our case, the lead locomotive, and we want to then decide if this is long hood forward or short hood forward, today we're going to set it up to be short hood forward so we do not reverse the direction at all, no need to. And that next step is to figure out what functions do we want this locomotive to have the ability to have controlled with that consist address. So as this is the leader, I want the front light to be on. I do not want the rear light on because it's going to be coupled up to another locomotive. So I only really want to activate the front light. I want the bell to be on, which in this case happens to be on F1. Uh, F2 is your horn. F3 is a coupler. F4 is dynamic brakes, and if, if you don't know what it is, simply look at your function mapping chart, and everything will be there for you. So as you can see, F1, here's my bell, here's my horn, a coupler, um, here's the dynamic brake fan. Um, you know, and those are typical things. There are certain things that you want every engine to have on. And uh, if we go back to uh, address and we'll look at that uh, chart again of what's activated in consist, the things that you almost always want on are your dynamic brakes, 
Um, any type of uh, F7 happens to be a switching mode and it will change the speed and momentum. So you may want to make sure that all of the consist is the same. Either you want it all on or you want them all off. So in this case, we're going to leave it on. That way, if we decide to use F7, um, they will all activate and work together. F8, in our case, turns the sound on and off. F9, this is important. This is our uh, full throttle features or... Um, um, drive hold as we call it um, so and f10 as you can see here is my brake so i definitely want f9 and f10 on now any of the other features i'm going to leave them off at the moment because we don't necessarily need them on um, but if if there are ones that you want to work like in this case um, well this would be rear ditch lights so you don't want those on um, F6 is front ditch lights, so it's probably important that you want the front ditch lights to be working while it's in consist, so you want to make sure that that's on. Sometimes F5 is a HEP mode if it's a passenger unit. Um, depending on the locomotive, if this is a leader on an Amtrak train, oftentimes the HEP unit is not activated. So in this engine, you wouldn't want it activated, but in the second engine, which is against the train, the HEP unit would be on when it's moving. So in that case you would want uh, and the second engine F, the HEP unit you'd want on the first engine the HEP unit you would want off um, so you know just keep those types of things in mind when you're setting this up and again just go back and forth between your function map and that chart and you'll quickly see what you want on and, and what you don't want on um, so that's about it oh here's a good one that you may want on in all of the locomotives manual notching so we have a, a manual notching on off switch on f28 and then you have uh, f26 is manual notch up and f27 is manual notch down so in in that case if you're going to use manual notching you want f26 f27 and f28 on in all of the locomotives that are in that consist that way they all operate together so this would be for the first locomotive now say i've and if I want to add that to the, the locomotive, I don't have to write the whole sound file again. I only have to write the data, just the CVs. So I would only use the piece of paper with the red arrow instead of the musical note. I don't want the musical note because that'll take about 25, 30 minutes, and there's no need to write the sound again. I'm only writing CVs. Now, all of these things that I've changed, um, if I don't have a loc programmer, you, of course, you can still use the show change CVs tool. And with everything that I've changed here, now that I haven't saved anything, I haven't, you know, started back over again, I can just simply go to show change CVs and I can have a list of what it is that I need to change. So remember I mentioned it was CV19 to 1. Um, that's your consist address. CV21 goes to 239, and those are all the bits that are combined uh, in the first part of this group. CV22 goes to 13, um, and that's, that's you know the second part of this group. And CV110 is 56, and that's down here at the bottom. So again, we use CV21, 22, 109, and 110 so 109 would kind of be in this group of, of function buttons that's not needed in this particular thing but all of those changes can be made with your command station whether it be digitrax or mrc or nce or um, any of them esu cab controls ecos um, any of those can be set this way but if you have a low programmer clearly it's easier just to quickly check those boxes hit the right button and everything is done. So say we go to a second locomotive now and you know just to keep things clear now we're on to address number four because that's the second locomotive in the group. Um, we want that to be long hood forward. So again we want to make sure that we enable the consist address. It has to be the same address as the first engine in consist which is number one and we want this one to be long hood forward so we want to reverse the direction in this particular engine, we do not want the front light to be on um, because, um, oh, actually, we we do want the front light to be on uh, because the front light is facing the the uh, towards the other end now. So if we would run around a train and go back the other way, then that would be the front light of that locomotive. So we want that to be the front light. Um, we want this to be the rear light. Um, so now that since that is the trailing locomotive we want to make sure that um, 
F1 is not on because we don't want the bell coming from the second engine. We don't want the horn coming from the second engine. We may want the coupler if we couple onto a train. You may want not want any lights on. If, if you're always going to be coupled up to the train, we may leave that off. So in, in this case, that's what we're going to do. Um, F4, again, your dynamic brakes, you want that to be on, even if it's a non-dynamic brake engine, because ESU decoders can keep that prime mover all the way down if it's the second unit and it's a non-dynamic brake locomotive. When the first engine, which has dynamics, is, is activated, the prime mover will go down to idle in the second because there's nothing telling it to turn a fan on or anything else. It will keep the prime mover down basically in idle, and the dynamic brakes will only work in the first engine. But the F4 feature will turn on the, the non-dynamic brakes in that engine if it's set up. So I am going to keep that on. Um, F6, again, ditch lights. I'm not going to be using the, the headlights or ditch lights in that engine, so I'm going to turn that off. F7 is switching mode. We are going to keep that on because it's a motion item so that we want both engines to operate and move the same. F8 is the sound. We definitely want that on in both engines. F9 is the drive hold. We want that on in both engines. F10 is the brake. We want that on. Um, F26 and 27 are manual notching up and down and F28 turns manual notching on and off. So those are all motion features that we definitely want to be the same between both engines in the consist. So once we've written these uh, to the decoders, um, simply go to your command station, put them on the track, uh, go to your command station and dial in address number one. And if that address, uh, if there's no other single engine set up as address number one, it's going to talk to this consist only and it will run them together just as we've set them up here. So give it a try. It's not hard. In fact, it will be easier than setting all of your CVs um, individually and, and testing things out. So um, very, very simple. Again, just write it with the CVs, not the musical note, because you're only writing the CVs, not the sound. Write it. It only takes a couple seconds. Um, so we'll do that here. And once that's done, Take it to your test, tack, test track and try it out. So again, guys, any questions, reach out to us at um, loksound.com or uh, directly with our email at uh, w, or, I'm sorry, um, support at loksound.com. So guys, again, any questions, reach out to us, let us know. Thanks for following along with us today and enjoy model railroading with ESU.